Hey, you better listen up one more time. I'm here to give you the juice today. The good stuff. None of that Watch Mojo top 10 facts you didn't know about Survivor baloney. I'm talking the stuff your grandpa wouldn't even dream of knowing. For real though, I took a ton of time finding obscure facts that I know you'll find interesting, and although you may know some of them, I guarantee that there are a bunch that you don't know. So without further ado, let's get into 46 straight minutes of Survivor Facts. Alright, I'm gonna read the votes. What? Survivor Borneo and Survivor Worlds Apart have the fewest unanimous votes of any season, excluding eliminations at the final three, with only one unanimous vote occurring in each of these seasons. In a poll that was taken during the reunion show, asking viewers who they would have voted for to win in Survivor Borneo at the final four, only 11% said that Richard was getting their vote. Every castaway on Borneo has been voted out at some point in their careers. The only other non-full returning season to have this distinction is Guatemala. Survivor Borneo at first was just called Survivor. It wasn't until Survivor All-Stars that it was officially changed to Survivor Borneo, and before this it was known as Survivor Pulau Tiga. During the filming of Survivor the Australian Outback, Colby Donaldson won a reward trip to the Great Barrier Reef, and he broke off coral, which he intended to keep as a souvenir. During the same trip, a production helicopter flew over a restricted sea area. Both of these events led to the show being fined 100000 Australian dollars. Mitchell Olsen revealed that when he was voting at the tribal council he ended up going home in on the Australian Outback, he could see and read that Colby Donaldson had already voted for him. Also, side note, Mitchell was seven feet tall. Tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Fifty percent of the cast from the Australian Outback have come back to compete in a future season, tied for the most of any season. Because there were literal man-killing animals in the area, the castaways of Survivor Africa had to live in a thorny enclosure. Even still, the conditions were so dangerous that armed soldiers regularly had to patrol the area as a safety precaution. The Final Four challenge in Survivor Africa was a trivia-based challenge based on the castaways that were voted out before them. One question was about which female contestant had no body piercings. Kim Johnson got it right as she answered Coley Goldsmith, and Lex Vandenberg got it wrong answering Lindsay Richter. But the producers got it wrong because Lex was, in fact, correct. Lindsay Richter did not have any piercings. This absolutely changed the game, as because of this, Lex lost this immunity challenge and Kim Johnson won, who would have possibly gone home that night, and Big Tom was sent home instead. Then, Kim Johnson won the next immunity challenge as well, sending Lex home. Once production was told of their mistake after the season, Survivor awarded both Big Tom and Lex $100,000 as an attempt at reconciliation for their mistake. Originally, Survivor Marquesas was supposed to be filmed in Jordan and was to be called Survivor Arabia, but due to the 9-11 attacks and the political situation in the Middle East, CBS was forced to pick a new location. During a tribal council in Thailand, Jeff legitimately could not understand who a vote was cast for as it just read, Bye Bye Denver Diva. Well, for the first time, I have a vote. I have no idea who it belongs to. Who wrote Bye Bye Denver Diva? Who's the name? Gandhi. Gandia. Bimber. Uh, Diva. In the future, write a name down, okay. okay? Enough with the nicknames. Jenna Maraska in Survivor the Amazon is the only female to ever give up their immunity necklace. This is also only one of three times where someone gave up an immunity necklace and didn't get voted out. The other time is when Chris Underwood gave up the immunity at the final four in Edge of Extinction. Burton gave up his immunity in Pearl Islands, but he was still immune from coming back into the game, so I'm not really going to count that one. The Final Four Immunity Challenge in Pearl Islands is the only time that an immunity challenge had no winner, as the jury was involved in the challenge and they beat the castaways. Two-time winner Sandra Diaz Twine was offered a spot on Survivor All-Stars, but turned it down due to the fact that she was still recovering from parasites she had gotten from Pearl Islands. The pay standard for Survivor All-Stars was significantly increased, as in the past, first boots were given roughly $2,500, but this season the first boot would be guaranteed at least $25,000. That alone is one-fourth of the prize money for winning Big Brother Canada, and back in the day, $25,000 equates to almost $40,000 nowadays. Just something to think about. The final six contestants on Survivor All-Stars were all from different seasons, which is quite impressive since there were only seven seasons total before this point. Before Survivor All-Stars started, every castaway was filmed getting their torch snuffed in an attempt to stop spoilers. Not a very obscure fact, but Survivor Palau is the only season to not have a merge because the Karor tribe won every single pre-merge immunity, so Stephanie LaGrosa was just absorbed into Karor after she was the last person left on her tribe. Because of this, no official merge happened and the merge buffs and colors were never incorporated. Before Survivor Guatemala started filming, the original first boots of Palau and Jonathan Libby and Wanda Shirk were considered to be the two returnees, but were then replaced with fan favorites Bobby John and Stephanie LaGrosa. Be 
The tribal council set on Survivor Panama, Exile Island, was a cave that was made out of foam. In Survivor Panama, only the final three won individual immunity. Terry won the first five, Aris won the final four challenge, and Danielle won the final immunity challenge. Are you serious? Because every right time you, you don't win something, you complain about it. Every right time. back at you. We have no respect for anybody else out here. Keep it up. Well, what Keep are you going to do? Say something bad about women? Do I have to worry about that? <laughs> of the 20 castaways on Survivor Cook Islands, only three weren't from California, New York, or Washington, D.C. Similarly, only three of the castaways applied for the show, and 17 were recruited. In Survivor Cook Islands, the trio of Jessica Smith, Ozzy, and Cowboy accidentally stumbled upon the other tribe's camp on the Cook Islands, the only time this has ever happened. Cook Islands is the only season where the mutiny offers was accepted, and it was accepted by two players. Ozzy only lost one individual immunity challenge the entire season of Cook Islands. Both Cook Islands and Palau have had only two players win individual immunity post-merge, the lowest of any season. Melissa McNulty was going to be the 20th castaway on Survivor Fiji. She traveled all the way to Fiji and participated in all of the preseason stuff. However, being left in the dark about when exactly the game would be starting, Melissa became overwhelmed and suffered a series of panic attacks. Minutes before the actual marooning, she consulted the onset psychologist, and it was decided that she was not mentally conditioned to undergo the breakers of the game and was removed. Due to Melissa leaving on the actual first day of filming, the producers were unable to find a replacement, thus the game started with only 19 cast members. Also, this is the only season to start with an odd-numbered cast. Due to the controversy of the racial divisions of tribes on the previous season, CBS made a conscious effort to include the same amount of racial diversity on Survivor Fiji to prove that the division based on race was not just a rating stunt. Consequently, Cook Islands and Fiji both have five African American, five Asian American, and five Hispanic American players, the most of any season. If you thought that Cook Islands was bad with having 17 recruits, Survivor Fiji, including Melissa who quit, had 19 recruits, with only one player, Gary, having applied to the show. Gary later had to quit due to illness early on in the season. On day 37 of Survivor Fiji, a coup d'etat was initiated by Fiji's military leader, which caused a slight panic that there would be a full relocation of the cast and the crew. Fortunately, only a few crew members had to relocate, but this did prevent the loved ones of the cast from being able to come to Fiji to participate in the loved ones reward challenge. Fiji is the only season with an all-African-American final three. At the finale, both Jeff Probst and Earl Cole stated that Earl had never received a vote against him the entire season, which is just false, as Earl received a vote at the third tribal council. However, the vote was a throwaway vote, even as stated by Rita, who said, I vote for Earl because I know for sure you won't be voted off today, and I can't vote for who we agreed on. I know you'll understand. Originally, Survivor Micronesia was supposed to be a full-on second all-star season featuring contestants from season 9 to 15. But, because CBS couldn't get enough of the players they really wanted to compete, such as Tom Westman, who declined the offer, they changed the idea from a full all-star season to a fans versus favorites format and also expanded the range of seasons included to season 7 to 15 in order to include Johnny Fairplay. If Amanda had gotten one more vote at Final Tribal Council, it would have been a 4-4 tie between her and Parvati with no third member in the Final Tribal Council, meaning that we have no idea how the tiebreaker would have been decided. Micronesia is the only season that had none of the first-time players ever make a Final Tribal Council. Blood vs. Water had no newbie player make the Final Tribal Council that season, but Brad Culpepper did end up making FTC on Game Changers. Shulker from Survivor Gabon is the only player to ever make it through the entirety of the game and never once have their name written down. She received no votes against her at any Tribal Council and then got no votes at the final Tribal Council. 38 days, nobody wrote down my name, but everybody thought about it. We are tied. Three votes Susie, three votes Bob. If this last vote is a vote for Sugar, we have a tie. It is not a vote for Sugar. On Gabon, Randy did not have a loved one that would come for a family visit. Luckily for production, he was voted out the round before the loved ones came. All four returning players from Survivor Token Teens has made the final Tribal Council at some point in their careers. For those of you who don't know, Token Teens was filmed in Brazil. Abby Maria Gomez from Survivor Philippines was originally recruited for Token Teens, but was cut from the cast because they thought that she would gain an unfair advantage because she was Brazilian and was originally from a neighboring state of Token Teens. I'm going to be honest, I don't really understand this. One reason why I don't understand this is because PG from Survivor China was born in China, but she was fine to play there. Just like I don't know. Just like nobody in this game knows. In Token Teens, JT played a super perfect game, as he never received a vote against him during the season, received all the jury votes at the end to win, and, as an added bonus, won the Sprint Player of the Season award, which is basically just America's favorite player. 
Survivor Samoa was originally only supposed to have 18 contestants, but then they decided to get rid of the family visit and use that extra allotted budget to increase the cast size up to 20 to include castaways Ashley Trainer and Eric Cardona. Ben Browning on Survivor Samoa is the only contestant to be kicked out of an immunity challenge by Jeff for something other than breaking the rules, as he was just too physical towards his opponents, doing things such as forcefully pushing others against fences and kicking them in the legs. Big battle on the ground. Ben! Stop! Ben! Out of the challenge! <laughs> First time in the history of Survivor, somebody's been pulled out of a challenge. Take a spot here, you're done. On Samoa, Jeff Probst wore a necklace made by Gina Cruz, a contestant from Marquesas. Day 39 of Samoa and Day 1 of Heroes vs. Villains were only 20 days apart, giving Russell Hance less than 3 weeks to recover from Samoa and prepare for his next season. This means that in a 98 day span, Russell Hance lived out on the islands of Survivor for 78 of them. Due to this back to back nature of filming Samoa and Heroes vs. Villains, none of the castaways on Heroes vs. Villains got to see Russell Hance play, but were told by production that Russell was one of the 5 most notorious villains to ever play the game. Candace was the only hero to win individual immunity on Heroes vs. Villains, and she did that before the merge even happened. Shane Powers was originally on the cast for Heroes vs. Villains, but was replaced by Russell. Richard Hatch was asked to be on the season, but was under house arrest, and a federal judge denied his request to leave the country to play. Natalie Bolton from Micronesia flew out to location and was an alternate, but she never made the final cut. Silhouettes of all of the heroes and villains are actually featured on the logo for the season. Parvati was originally on the Heroes Tribe and Candice was originally on the Villains Tribe, but they were swapped last minute. Great player? Yes, that's why you're here. Hero? No. James, from your two cents, Parvati, hero or villain? Villain. <laughs> James is bigger than me. James is right. Survivor Nicaragua is the only all-male Final Three ever. Three contestants were cast on South Pacific through winning a Sears casting competition, one of whom was the eventual winner, Sophie Clark. For seven consecutive seasons, from Token Teens to One World, all of the finalists originated from the same tribe. To put this into perspective, it has now been 12 seasons since all the finalists were from the same tribe, with the last instance occurring in Kagiyan with Tony and Wu. Only four players were voted out pre-merge on One World, the lowest amount of any season. One World is the only season to have everyone in the final five be of the same gender. Colton Cumbie and Bill Posley were known to not get along, and they had some weird negative vibes going on between them. But I do have, like, African-American people in my life. Who? <laughs> my housekeeper. So, I mean, like, that just put us on a weird vibe from day one. But it actually all started when Bill found and took Colton's immunity idol and threw it into the ocean, which is a direct violation of the Survivor rulebook. Colton is still a piece of shit for what he was saying, though. But I don't have a problem with Bill because of his race at all. The problem I have with Bill is that he's poor, pitiful me. I'm poor. Like, I don't associate with people like that in the real world, and I'm sure as hell not going to associate with people like that out here. One World was the only season in a span of six seasons that didn't have any returning players. There are eight different seasons that had a final three but also had nine jurors, which could have potentially led to a 3-3-3 tie vote. And again, we have no idea how they would break that time. One World was the last season that this was possible. For eight straight seasons from Gabon up until One World, a woman was kicked out first. The Matt Singh tribe on Survivor Philippines is the only tribe in history to never win any challenge, being immunity or reward. Talking to, I don't know who, if you're talking to God. I'm talking to God, Lord. I mean, Jeff, you know. Denise Stapley was the youngest member of the final three on the Philippines, and she was 41. Denise is the only person in Survivor history to attend every single tribal council in a season, including the final tribal council. Malcolm Freeberg, after Philippines finished filming, didn't go back home and stayed on site for two and a half weeks before filming for Karen Moen started. Karen Moen had multiple instances of three-way ties at tribal council, the only season to have this happen. Eddie, we have a three-way tie. Kara Moen is the only season that did not invite the pre-jury members to sit on the stage during the reunion, and instead they were forced to sit in the front row of the audience. Weird. No newbie player from Kara Moen has ever played again, the only season to have this distinction. I'm not counting Edge of Extinction or Island of the Idols because there hasn't been an opportunity to have anyone come back, and I'm positive we're going to see some players like Rick Devins, Nora, Elaine, etc. compete again. RC from Survivor Philippines was on the cast of Blood vs. Water along with her dad, but 24 hours before day zero, the dad's blood pressure rose sharply and he was taken to a hospital, leading for them to be replaced by Candace and John Cody. The first four people to be voted out on Blood vs. Water were women, but the first two eliminated players were both men. 
Blood vs. Water is the only season to have someone be voted out pre-merge twice, that being Laura Bonham. The Galong Tribe is the only pre-merge tribe to never find the hidden immunity idol placed there. All four players that won individual immunity on Kagiyan ended up coming back for Survivor Cambodia second chances. An incredible comeback! Yes! yes! wins immunity! Yes! Guaranteed a spot in the final four! Massive comeback! Kagiyan has the most final tribal council appearances of any season, with six. Tony and Wu in Kagiyan, Spencer and Tasha in Cambodia, Sarah in Game Changers, and Tony again in Winners of War. Kagiyan has also produced the most winning games with three, Tony twice and Sarah once. San Juan del Sur originally had 20 players, but a member from a pair of sisters failed the final medical examination 48 hours before filming started. Given the short time frame and not having any replacement pairs of the same gender, production was forced to start the season with only 18 castaways, which led to an unintended 10 to 8 gender ratio in favor of the men. The healthy sister of the two, So Kim, was brought back for the next season, but she was voted out first. After 29 seasons of the show, John Mish was the first player to be voted out on Day 35, which I just find so odd. San Juan del Sur was supposed to have Redemption Island in play, but was changed to Exile Island. Mike White, eight seasons before he played on David vs. Goliath, apparently was a major factor in influencing production to switch from Redemption Island to Exile Island, and the Redemption Island duels instead became the hero duels that were seen on the season. Only four women were voted out of San Juan del Sur, the lowest ever. Production was unsatisfied with San Juan del Sur's performance and attributed that to casting specifically for Blood vs. Water contestants, severely limiting the pool of possible players. To remedy this, they decided to find the cast they wanted to settle on first for Season 30 before eventually coming up with the white-collar, blue-collar, no-collar idea. Mike Holloway was the first player to save themselves with a hidden immunity idol and go on to win the season. Mike was also immune at every tribal council from the final nine onwards, as he won five out of the last six immunity challenges and then played his idol at the one tribal he wasn't immune for. Hayden Moss was going to be on the ballot for second chances, but production thought it wouldn't be fair since he already went on and won Big Brother, so this would be more of like a third chance for him. Chance. Don't forget, you have to pay your taxes from this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make that same mistake that Richard Hatch made. And... <laughs> Filming for Ko Rong was finished before Second Chances even had the cast finalized, but because of the way the voting and marooning played out, production thought it best to air Second Chances before Ko Rong, the only time that seasons have been aired out of the order in which they were filmed. Had Mike Holloway not won Season 30, he would have been on the cast for Cambodia, but it is unknown whose spot he would have taken. A little post-production here, I stumbled across some strongly rumored voting placements for the Second Chances ballot, and I wanted to share that right here because I found it very interesting. But keep in mind that this is by no means a legitimate poll, but it could be as it comes from people in the Survivor Spoils community. Starting with the women, the number one most voted player was Sierra Easton, followed by Tasha and Cass, then Wigglesworth, Shireen, and Abby Maria Gomez, with Kelly Wentworth at the 7 spot, Kimmy Kappenberg at 8, PG at 9, and Monica Padilla rounding out the cast at the 10th spot. T-Bird was supposedly number 12, and Carolyn Revere was number 13. For the boys, the number one Minnesota player was Spencer, followed closely by Joe, and in third was Mike Holloway, who was ineligible because he won. In the fourth spot was Jeremy, followed by Fishback and Keith Nail, with Vetus at the number 7, Wu at the number 8, Jeff Varner at 9, and Terry Dietz as the 10th man on the roster. Because Mike was ineligible, the number 11 male was instead put on the cast, being Andrew Savage. Shane was supposedly the number 12 spot, with Brad Culpepper and Troy Zan, two of the eventual final three for Game Changers, being in the 13th and 14th spots respectively. Vetus, the first boot of second chances, decided he did not want to stay at Ponderosa and demanded that he be sent home. Production was obviously not happy with this because it could easily give away that Vetus was voted out early and he was banned from attending the reunion show. 20 votes were negated by hidden immunity idols on Cambodia, the most of any season ever. Four idols were played correctly on Cambodia as well, the most ever. The final six vote in Cambodia is the first time that all votes were negated due to two correct idol plays. Jeremy. Oh, will not snap! Count. What the hell? <laughs> no one's <one's laughs> All right, for the first time in 31 seasons, we have no votes cast for anybody at Tribal Council. Wow. Joe Anglum was immune all the way up until day 29 on Cambodia, the longest any player has been immune in a season ever, since he won every tribal immunity in the pre-merge and then went on to win the first four individual immunities. Only 12 people were voted out on Koh Rong, the lowest of any season ever. Caleb Reynolds literally almost died on Koh Rong, and his evacuation wasn't just edited up for the season for dramatic effect. Hidden immunity idols played a pretty big part of Koh Rong, but funnily enough, no idol was ever actually played. Wow. Wow. 
Kilrong is the only season with all new players to have a final three at the end and have all three return for a later season. Millennials vs. Gen X was supposed to start two weeks earlier than it actually did due to very dangerous cyclones that tore apart challenge setups and campsites. During a tribal immunity challenge in Millennials vs. Gen X, there looks to be a hidden immunity idol attached to one of the tribe's baskets, leading people to believe that there is some unaired footage of a player finding a clue for this idol or advantage, but not being brave enough to retrieve it. Sri Fields is the only person to be voted out with zero votes, as everyone else at the final six of Game Changers had immunity of some sorts. Others have gone home with zero votes, but it was due to a rock draw or some other sort. And for what it's worth, not a single vote in here has your name on it. It has since been revealed that this vote was a 3-2-1 split vote with the eventual winner Sarah Lucina being the one who would have gone home had it not been for her legacy advantage. Ghost Island was the first season since Samoa to be all newbies and not have the tribes decided by a theme. The first five members of the jury all voted for Dominic while the last five members of the jury, and eventually six when Laurel joined the jury, all voted for Wendell. David vs. Goliath marks the first time production specifically hid the voting booth from the contestants so that it wouldn't be seen if a castaway was using an idle nullifier while voting. This nullifier was played against... Dan. Oh my oh, god! Wow. wow. Whoa. What? Eight different players won individual immunity on David vs. Goliath, the most of any season. Nick Wilson was the only player to win immunity more than once on the season, and he did it three times. It was announced during the finale of David vs. Goliath after Davey was voted off that he wasn't on the initial cast and was only given two days notice before playing when someone dropped. It is heavily speculated that the individual that dropped was actually Sari Field's son Jared, who was seen as her loved one on Game Changers. Edge of Extinction is the only mixed season of vets and newbies that did not have a returner make it to the final tribal council. Rick Devins won individual immunity four times, and he also possessed four hidden immunity idols post-merge, the highest number of immunity items any player has ever had starting at the merge. This advantage expired on day nine and has no power. Ron and Julie, you are villains. I was already going home. Do you just want to make me look stupid? So my kids think I'm an idiot? Except... You've proven time and time again that you're untrustworthy and disloyal, and Julie's proven time and time again that she loves lying to people's faces. <laughs> so I would like to play this hidden immunity idol for myself. You guys are gems. Oh. Oh. On Island of the Idols, Rob and Sandra were given creative control over the lessons they would teach and how they would go about doing things. Production also offered to build Rob and Sandra a shelter, but they adamantly refused because they wanted to relive the survivor experience and build their own. Dan Spilo is the first and only objection in the show's history, although you could argue that Brandon Hanson and Jeff Varner's exits were pretty close to being classified as objections. This might not be news to you, but Tommy Sheehan is two years younger than Dean Kowalski, which blew my mind. Island of the Idols had 12 idols in play throughout the season. What the heck? Richard Hatch was set to compete on Winners at War, but due to his actions involving Sue Hawk on All-Stars, combined with the recent actions of Dan Spilo on the prior season, they decided it might not sit well with the audience to have Richard on the season, and he was cut. Tina was also seemingly cut alongside Richard Hatch, but the reasoning for that is unknown. Artis was invited, but refused to come out and leave his family behind. Earl was also invited, but couldn't due to work issues as well as wanting to take care of his wife, who was expecting soon. Cochran was invited and would have had a guaranteed spot, but he decided to stick to his word and never play again. Mike Holloway was invited, but was cut from the final cast, likely having his spot taken by Ben Drebergen. Now that we've gone through all the seasons, we're going to look at some more facts that are more player-based and less so season-based. Natalie Anderson has the highest slash best average placement among castaways who have played multiple times at 1.5. Second place goes to Michelle Fitzgerald with an average placement of second. And third place is a tie between Spencer Bledsoe and Ben Drebergen with an average placement of third. Natalie Anderson never survived a vote on Winners at War without immunity of some kind. Natalie Anderson had the youngest loved one be a part of the loved one's visit as her niece Trinity was just six months old. Only Ian Rosenberg and Brandon Hans were voted out outside of Tribal Council. I would consider putting Candace Cody and Lauren Bonham in this, but I'm not going to. And you could also count Wanda and Jonathan, but they weren't voted out necessarily, and they were just not picked to play. Fill up your bitch! Stephanie LaGrosa has the worst challenge win-loss ratio at 10-39 to 39 of any player who has played multiple seasons. 
According to Rupert Bonham, at one point it was a rule that any loved one that came for a loved one's visit would be ineligible to ever play Survivor, but this was obviously reversed at one point as Rupert's wife Laura, as well as Tina Wesson's daughter Katie, both came to play on Blood vs. Water. Jenna Maraska, Michael Scoopin, Colton Cumby, and Michelle Fitzgerald are the only players to play multiple times and never be voted out. However, Colton quit twice, Jenna quit once, and Scoopin was medevaced once, so Michelle is the only player to make it to the final tribal console every time they played. Ozzy is the only player who has played on all four types of seasons. All newbies, all returnees, half returnees, half newbies, and mostly newbies with two to four returnees. Only three contestants have ever been to Exile Island and Redemption Island. Aris, Candice, and Ozzy. Ozzy is the only one who majorly benefited from each, as he returned from Redemption Island twice, and he also found an idol on Exile. Jeff Farner is the only three-time player to never make the jury stage. Karishma had 22 votes against her on Island of the Idols, the most of any player on one season. Andrea has had 36 votes against her throughout her three times playing, the most of any player ever. Caleb Reynolds is the only contestant to go to his first tribal council on his second season. Sari, Aubrey, Parvati, and Boston Rob have each made it to the finale episode on three separate seasons. However, Sari is the only one to do this without being on the edge of extinction. Oh, there you yes! Tony Vlachos has the most votes at Final Travel Council for both formats. He received 8 votes in his final 2 in Kagiyan, the most of any player in a final 2, and he received 12 votes in his final 3 in Winners of War, the most of any player in a final 3. He also has the most Final Tribal votes of any player, with 20. Tony is also the lowest placing player to return for a future season, as nobody who has gotten 19th has ever returned. Tony found four idols throughout his career, and he has played three of them. However, he has never negated a single vote, which statistically makes him the worst person at playing idols, as he has played three idols completely incorrectly, but we obviously know it's not as simple as that. In the last 14 seasons, the only two winners who never possessed an immunity idol slash legacy advantage are Michelle Fitzgerald and Tommy Sheehan. Rick Devins is the only player to be in possession of four different idols on one season. Michelle Fitzgerald is the only winner who never went to a pre-merge tribal on her winning season. Michelle on Ko Rong was only available to be voted out four times, the second fewest of any player, only behind Tom Westman who was only available to be voted out at three tribal councils. Speaking of Tom, Tom's wife told him to wear swim trunks to the photo shoot before the start of Palau because she remembered how on Pearl Island the contestants were surprised to start the game with only the clothes they had on them. Thus, when it happened again on Palau, Tom was prepared. Every time Aubrey Bracco had her name written down at Tribal and Co. Wrong, she received two votes, including Final Tribal Council. Jeff Varner and Malcolm Freeberg have each played three times and lost the first immunity challenge every single time. Colby Donaldson has voted against Jerry Manthe in every season he competed in. Sherry, one of the finalists on Caramoan, has a son with autism that is named after Colby Donaldson. I even named my son Colby after Colby Donaldson. Ethan Zahn and Jenna Maraska were considered to be the two that came back as returnees for South Pacific, but they declined because they didn't want to compete against each other. Amanda Kimmel and James Clement have played together on all three of their seasons, but Amanda outlasted James every single time. On Heroes vs. Villains, in the preseason, when asked what Survivor contestant they respected the most, they each said each other. Amanda played 108 days of Survivor before she was first voted out, the most by any player ever. Speaking of days, let's talk about them. Note, these are only about returnees. There are 103 players that have played on multiple seasons. Francesca Hoagie has the fewest days played for returnees at just 9 days. Only 7 out of the 103 returning players have played less than 39 days. Jenna Maraska has the fewest number of days played for a winner at 48, but this is due to her quitting. Tom Westman has the fewest number of days for a winner who never quit at 53 days. Jeff Farner has the fewest number of days played of any 3-time player at 50 days, and it's not very close either as Sierra Easton has the next fewest at 66.5 days. If you include Australian Survivor, Russell Hans has played for 93 days, making Russell the only 4-time player to not play one 100 days. 11 players have played over 100 days, but funnily enough, the majority, 6 out of 11, have never won. Edge of Extinction definitely fudges with some of these numbers, but for one-time players, Keith Famey has the most days played at 41. For two-time players, Michelle Fitzgerald has played 78 days, which is an average of making it to day 39 per season, and Natalie Anderson has technically played 78.5 days because of the day zero thing on season 29, making that an average of making it to day 39.25 each season she played, making her the only returning player to average more than 39 days per season. For three-time players, Aubrey Bracco has the most 
most days played at 111, which is an average of making it to day 37 per season. For four-time players, Parvati Shallow has played 149 days, which is 21 more days than the next closest four-time player, Ozzy, and has an average of making it to day 37.25 per season. For five-time players, Boston Rob has played 152 days, the most of any player ever, but he only has an average of making it to day 30.4 per season. Jenna Moraska won the million dollars by winning Survivor the Amazon, but also earned another million by posing nude with Heidi Strobel for Playboy. Mm, hey Jenna, how is it? Oh god, guys Hi. have no idea. Hi. Are you in there? Chris Underwood and Yul Kwan are the only two people to never be able to be voted out in the post-merge, as Yul had his god idol protecting him the whole time, and Chris was only there for the last three tribal councils, where he played two immunity idols in one final immunity and made the decision himself to go against Rick Devins in firemaking. Even though Chris only played for 13 days, he attended the same number of tribals as Michelle Fitzgerald on their winning seasons, at seven each. Terry Dietz in Panama and Sandra Diaz Twine in Winners at War are the only two players who ever were voted out by only one vote, with that vote being the only vote they received the entire season. Terry is the only player to win five individual immunities but not make the final Tribal Council. Sandra is the only player who played four times and has never been on the jury. Boston Rob also held this distinction but finally made the jury on his fifth game. He almost did. He should have taken this guy out. Troyzan was the only contestant on Game Changers that hadn't played with anyone else on the cast. Troyzan was cast on both Karamoan and Blood vs. Water, but was replaced on both seasons. He was also on the ballot for Cambodia, but not voted in, which means that Troyzan really had a rough time being continuously almost on seasons and only finding out he wasn't on the cast at the very last minute on three separate occasions. Troyzan knocks out his third ah! target! Come on! He's moving on to the final! This is it my island! You can't beat me! Shut up. Uh, please. Not oh, oh like my that. god, please not this whole. Brad and Monica Culpepper originally applied for the Amazing Race, but casting directed them towards Survivor instead, where they really liked Monica, but didn't really care for Brad, which is probably why she was casted first. Speaking of the Culpeppers, both of them were eliminated on day 14 on their first seasons and then went on to get to day 39 and get second place on their second seasons. Kelly Wentworth celebrated her birthday on the island all three times she played. Joe Anglum, after making it 32 days on Cambodia, never voted for the person that went home at Tribal Council, a survivor record. Joe, who played on three separate seasons and made the merge every time, never attended a pre-merge Tribal Council after day 16 of his first season, Worlds Apart. Joe, after playing three times, only attended seven Tribal Councils that he wasn't immune in. Talking more numbers, Joe was in the game for a total of 28 Tribal Councils, but one immunity of some sort for 21 of them. He only attended 13 and was immune for six of them. Jeremy Collins is the only winner to only win the final immunity challenge, but no other individual immunity. Ozzy dated Lindsay Lohan. Good for him. Ozzy is also the only player to make the merge all four times he played. Jeff Kent tore his MCL on day one of the Philippines after getting off the boat. What pisses me off is I think I've made about $60 million playing baseball, and I want this freaking million dollars in this game. And it's not even a million bucks. It's 600 grand by the time Obama takes it. I'm a Game 7 World Series loser. You know, I've played in the biggest games in the world and the worst games in the world, but this just sucks. Before Kagiyan started filming, Jeff Probst wrote Spencer Bledsoe a note that said, Spencer, you will not win, Probst, and is currently hanging on Spencer's fridge. Both times Spencer played, he was the only male on his original tribe to make the merge. Even though Spencer has publicly said that he is done with Survivor, he accepted a place on season 40 before it became all winners. Andrea is close friends with Big Brother 17 contestant Meg Malley, and she even appeared in Meg's introduction video on the first episode of Big Brother 17. Meg is also engaged to season 30 winner Mike Holloway. Mike Holloway is one of five men to win five individual immunities in a single season, but is the only one who has only played once. Sierra Dawn Thomas was originally an alternate for Game Changers and ended up replacing Natalie Anderson after she couldn't compete. Rodney from Worlds Apart, from day 15 to day 38, which includes the entire post-merge, went without winning a single thing. He never won an immunity, a reward, or a fire-making challenge. You just think I'm a meathead, but when it comes to the competition, I'm filet mignon and they're a bunch of steakums. Sarah Lucina has competed in 21 individual immunity challenges and never won a single one. Tina Wesson was originally only an alternate for the Australian Outback and was only given a few days notice that she was going to play. 
Sari Fields is the only player to be idled out multiple times, and you could argue that she was idled out three different times, as on Exile Island she was only voted out at four because Terry had his god idol, in Heroes vs. Villains she was really idled out after Tom Westman played an idol, and in Game Changers we have the famous Advantage Geddon. Despite being voted out four times, Sari technically never had the majority vote for her. She had two out of four people vote her out on Exile Island, only one out of three people vote her out on Micronesia, three out of eight people vote her out on Heroes vs. Villains, and zero out of six people vote her out on Game Changers. Kelly Wigglesworth, runner-up on Borneo, didn't watch any season of Survivor, including her own season, until roughly 12 to 13 years after she competed. During the airing of Borneo, to trick and mislead any hackers away from finding spoilers, Survivor hid photos on the CBS site with every castaway's headshots having a big X over them except for Jervis Peterson. This was done to directly mislead anyone who found it into thinking that it meant that Jervis won and get them to stop digging any deeper in order to hide that Richard Hatch was the actual winner. This fact is definitely more for me than for anyone else, but Matt Elrod, the basically permanent Redemption Island resident on season 22, has a career in Hollywood going under the stage name Wyatt Nash and played the role of Charles Smith on Riverdale. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm ready to go home. This is so much better. I mean, that's, that home sweet home. Hayden Moss was a part of an all-male alliance in both Big Brother and Survivor, and he outlasted every alliance member on both shows. Boston Rob never told Amber that he made it to the end of Redemption Island and told her that he was voted out right at the end in fourth place. She didn't know he made it to the end in one until the finale episode. Tommy Sheehan was the first winner to not have any type of immunity or advantage throughout the entire season since Natalie White in Samoa, a span of 20 seasons. The winner of the final immunity challenge has won the game 42.5% of the time. It works! Yeah! Yeah! Final immunity! Yeah! Guaranteed a spot! at the final tribal council. If you are a contestant or crew member and are caught leaking information about a current season before its intended release, it's a major breach of contract and comes with a $5 million lawsuit. Russell Hance supposedly leaked the results for both Samoa and Heroes vs. Villains, but for some reason he wasn't hit with the lawsuit, potentially because they couldn't prove that he was the one that leaked it. Russell Hance lost 60 pounds on Samoa. Brian Heideck is the only winner to never receive a vote against them throughout all seasons played. When Coach left the United States to film Token Teens, he told his co-workers that he was having surgery for a rare form of brain cancer. During Heroes vs. Villains, Coach routinely wrote numbers alongside the person he was voting out. These were 4, 18, 1, and 7, which, when ran alongside the alphabet, spells drag in an attempt to spell Dragon Slayer through his votes. PG Law snuck in flint, fishing wire, and fishing hooks disguised as jewelry on Cambodia, which were later confiscated by production. Shane Powers appears as an angry golfer in Tyler the Creator's music video for Tamale. Spencer Bledsoe took note that there was a five-piece puzzle that went unused on Worlds Apart and took the time to study it in case it ever came back. He was right as it came back in Survivor Cambodia when Spencer was competing and he solved the puzzle faster than Jeff Probst had ever seen. Early on in the show, there was a challenge where contestants had to balance a wooden pole with jugs of water. Midway through, one of the poles broke and they had to reshoot the whole game with new rules. Since then, every challenge is extensively tested to make sure everything works. When Johnny Fairplay lied about his grandmother dying, the producers weren't even aware that he was lying and called his grandmother's home to offer condolences. To their surprise, grandma was the one to answer the phone call. Yeah, what happened was after that challenge, we were all devastated, so we called back home to see if there was anything we could do and you answered the damn phone. <laughs> We almost had Amazing Race host Phil Kogan get the Survivor gig over Probst. Parvati has only been voted out when Yule was there. Tarzan lost an immunity challenge in one second during One World. Tarzan, first one out of the challenge. You didn't have a lot of faith you were going to last, did you? Nope. Is it defeat? Failure. Failure. Just general <laughs> failure. Failure. Richard Hatch got caught smuggling matches up his butt at the start of Survivor All-Stars. Russell Hance received fewer jury votes from 18 jurors than Clay Jordan received from 7. Out of Russell Hance's 27 tribal councils in the U.S., the person he voted for went home 25 times. The only times that they didn't go home was in the pre-merge of Heroes vs. Villains when he voted for Courtney, but Coach ended up going instead, and in Redemption Island when he was voted out. Shane Powers found cocaine washed up in Exile Island. He took a snort before the crew found it and confiscated it. James Clement's luxury item on Heroes vs. Villains was one of the two idols that he didn't use in China. Despite James being one of the strongest men to ever play Survivor, he never won any individual challenge across all three of his seasons. Let's eat nothing, baby. Grab the egg, baby.
Go talk now. Here we go. Survivors ready. Go! James goes after yeah. Randy and with oh. one push. Randy in the mud. Heroes win! If you watch my Big Brother fact video, you'll know that at the end I put in some facts that really had nothing to do with the game and more so had to do with serious events and controversies surrounding contestants, and I'm doing the same thing here. However, some of these facts I'm about to talk about are not quite PG and are very serious, so if you're not into these types of facts or if you suffer from any traumatic events in the past, I'd like to issue a broad trigger warning right now. If you're good with it though, let's continue. In 2006, Richard Hatch was found guilty of tax evasion connected with his $1 million prize money from winning Borneo and was sentenced to 51 months in prison. Because of this, he was unable to participate in seasons such as Micronesia, Heroes vs. Villains, and Redemption Island for which he was considered. However, Hatch declared that he and Survivor had come to an agreement for Survivor producers to pay his taxes on the money if he kept quiet about a cheating scandal. In 2015, right before Kelly Wigglesworth was slated to return for Cambodia, Hatch finally revealed the cheating scandal to be that he found Kelly getting fed by the crew members and later found out that she was being fed all throughout the season of Borneo. Michael Scoopin has a whole laundry list of things to talk about. First off, Scoopin has had his driver's license suspended over 20 times since 1999. In 2016, Scoopin was involved in a Ponzi scheme, which he made, called Pay It Forward. An investigation was taken place and police traced it back to Scoopin and searched through his computer, where, on top of finding information relating to the Ponzi scheme, found other stuff that definitely should not have been on his computer. What's worse is that Scoopin then tried to blame the stuff on his computer on his own kids in an attempt to clear his name before he was found guilty. What a guy. Part of your defense was casting suspicion on your 17 year old stepchild. During the Survivor Gabon premiere, castaway Marcus Lehman had a bit of a wardrobe malfunction. As he was running in a challenge, his member was briefly exposed and it wasn't blurred out. Johnny Fairplay and his mother were arrested for larceny. For those of you who don't know, larceny basically means stealing. It's okay if you didn't know because I had no idea. The specifics of this being that Fairplay got arrested for stealing various pieces of furniture and a $5,000 silver necklace from his grandmother, the same grandmother from the infamous Johnny Fairplay moment. Drew from San Juan del Sur was arrested for destroying some cable wires by accident while digging around. Jenna Maraska overdosed on drugs and was found unconscious in her car by police. She was later arrested due to the drugs and also because she attempted to fight and bite a cop while in the ambulance. Todd Herzog struggled severely with alcohol after his win on China. He was even on the Dr. Phil show multiple times to try to help fix the issue, and the first time he was very, very intoxicated while up on the stage. However, according to Todd, when he got to the dressing room before his first appearance, he was sober. They had put a bottle of vodka in there for him to drink, and then gave him a Xanax afterwards to help calm his nerves. Sugar was a cast member on the fifth season of Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew in 2011. She claimed that she went on a downward spiral after Heroes vs. Villains had aired. There, Sugar revealed that she had attempted suicide as a result of being voted out. She also claimed to have been evacuated from Samoa to Australia by the producers, who feared that she would hurt herself by overdosing. Brad Culpepper was sued for fraud and deceit by an insurance company after he claimed for years to have constant pain and stiffness in his back, prohibiting him from doing daily activities. But he was then seen on Blood vs. Water paddling canoes, holding and stacking large heavy boxes, and diving repeatedly into the water. Denise Martin lied in the Survivor China reunion and said that she lost her job and never got it back as a school lunch lady after her time in China, which prompted CBS to give her $50,000. However, she was lying and her school was the ones that confirmed it and Denise was basically forced to donate all of that money to charity. Um, I couldn't say I'm sorry enough. Oops. Busted. Jenna Lewis had an adult video of her and her then-husband leaked to the internet, and she appeared to be devastated that it was leaked. However, it was speculated that she released it on purpose for more fame and to make money from it, and after an investigation, it was later revealed that Jenna, her husband, and her manager were all behind the website that was selling the videos, and they were making mad profits from it. Deb Eaton, the first boot from Survivor the Australian Outback, married her stepson four years after her husband passed away, and she later said she regretted being on Survivor because that information came out and she was subject to public ridicule by the millions, and the media was tearing her to shreds. Watching her talk about it on the reunion show was honestly quite heartbreaking. 
This is not the U.S. version of Survivor, but in the French version, 25-year-old Gerald Babin got sick on the first day of filming and very unfortunately died of a heart attack after being airlifted to a hospital. That season of the show was then canceled. Shortly thereafter, the production's doctor, Dr. Costa, wrote a suicide note blaming the press for unfairly criticizing him over the death of Babin before taking his own life. To end on a lighter note though, a few weeks after winning Survivor Nicaragua, Fabio Berza got a DUI for riding on a skateboard while under the influence. Then, when he was released from the police station after the bail was paid later that night, he was picked up in a white stretch limousine. And there you have it. That was 40 something minutes straight of Survivor facts and roughly 40 hours of my life gone into making this video. I didn't think I was going to do one after Big Brother, and after making this one, I'm even more convinced to never do it again because the amount of work was just brutal. But I'm a sucker, and I'll most certainly be making one for the challenge in the near future, albeit a shorter one than this. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. The Big Brother Fact video is my most viewed original creation on this channel, and the overwhelming positive response from it is what pushed me to make this video. If you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments because it really helps out a lot. Also, if you want to hit a buddy up with a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Well, tonight was a complicated, but ultimately beautiful night that will never be forgotten. Grab your torches, head back to camp. Good night.